Hello again. Um, inside this time. I uh, just wanted to get, it's very hard for me to frame this right, so I'm, I'm doing this video many times over, but until I get it right, I'm not going to be satisfied with it. Regarding Matthew um, chapter 10 and verse 5, where, it's, where Jesus sends out the twelve, he says very clearly, do not go to the, um, to the houses of the Gentiles, but rather go to the houses of the, of the lost sheep of Israel. Um, he says this, and then uh, pretty clearly afterwards, okay, what he says is, um, is that, and you will not go, I, for truly I tell you, you will not even get done going through the houses of Israel before the Son of Man comes. This word Son of Man is found in the book of Daniel, and uh, it's associated with the, 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 the coming, or the second coming, the, 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 the final coming of the Lord. Um, and so the, the problem here is that if the statement is saying that, um, that you're not going to get done going through all the houses of, of Israel, and you're not to go to the Gentiles, then this statement would cut the Gentiles completely out of salvation. Now, so what, what actually happened here? Well, the, the Jews were sent out, the, the twelve were sent out to Israel. Jesus was crucified. Jesus was resurrected. But the, the apostles went out and they, they did preach to the Gentiles after the resurrection. Remember, Philip went to the eunuch. Peter was the first apostle to go to the was was called to go to the Gentiles. The other apostle, the other apostles, according to history, went out and preached to the Gentiles. They were dispersed out of out of there. So, if the second kingdom was go going to come and they weren't to go to the Gentiles, then now, if you're looking at this in a, in a future sense, then basically uh, the Matthew chapter 10 verse 5 doesn't fit where it says, "Do not go to the to to the to the houses of the Gentiles and only go to the lost sheep of Israel." And if you're saying that the the prophecy is something that's future and it's going to be fulfilled, that later the, the Jews the, the apostles somehow or another will, will through their words or whatever it is will preach to the Jews again, it doesn't. It doesn't fit with the idea that that it says that that you will not go through or get done going through the cities of Israel before before the Gentiles are preached to and before the kingdom comes. So it leaves you in a conundrum. And you would say, well, it's not that bad of a conundrum. But I, I would say to you this: but Jesus Himself preached to people who were uh, from the, the the woman at the well who was a Samaritan. And many people, the Samaritans, came to Christ. So why would, if the message only went to the Jews, why would Jesus preach to the Samaritans? Now, I have a, a pat answer for that. Um, you know, uh, although it doesn't fit because Jesus did preach to the, the Samaritans when he spoke to the woman at the well. So it doesn't make sense that, that uh, it should only go to the lost uh, uh, sheep of the house of Israel. And that the Gentiles weren't going to hear even before the cross. See, if you say it's by the resurrection, okay, well that that makes sense. The most sense is that what he was talking about is that the, you will go throughout the cities of Israel, and by that time uh, preach the kingdom, because that's uh, verse seven. Preach the the, the the coming of the kingdom, and the kingdom was coming when what? When 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 Jesus was died on the cross and was uh, rose the third day and walked the earth. There was the, the, the beginning of the kingdom. And that would reconcile, that best reconciles everything. Uh, but like I said, uh, it doesn't explain the idea that, um, that, that Christ actually preached to the Samaritans before this. The other idea is, is uh, refuting preterism. Preterism would basically say that, um, that what happened here is that the, uh, because based on uh, on Matthew 10 verse 5 that that the Jews did preach 
and the, to the to the lost house uh, to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, and the end did come. The only problem with that, okay, is that well then that would have cut out the Gentiles also because if the kingdom came at the at at the um, resurrection, right, or, or 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 you know when he when he came at that time, or the kingdom came at the fall of the temple, then you still are, are left with the idea that um, um, you're not to preach to the, to the Gentiles. And I guess I could reconcile that with the idea, the same idea that it was talking about the resurrection. But then it doesn't make, it doesn't make a case for preterism because it could mean both things now, can't it? If it meant, if Matthew chapter 10 was talking about the resurrection, and then the preaching out to the world, and the fall, then the fall of the temple, whether it happened or not happened, uh, to use Matthew chapter 10 to, to, to purport the idea that this is why preterism is true, well, that doesn't make the case for it, because basically um, it would just go right along with Scripture. It makes the Scripture fit perfectly. It is an anomaly. It's something I wanted to, to, to point out. Not everything, as many people have debated over this Scripture, but I wanted to bring it out that... Uh, that, that no matter what your view on it, um, you, can't, you can't prove preterism through it. And um, basically, um, it seemed like there was a lot of racism going on at the time, and nobody was there at the time. So, so um, you know, that's my view on it. That's, that's what I see. I wanted to make it clear. So, um, so there it is on its face. Any questions, if you have any insights, uh, let me know. Thank you.